Now we're going to look at a more substantial example. Here's the problem. We want to count partitions, where the number of partitions of a positive integer using parts up to size n is the number of ways in which n, this number, can be expressed as the sum of parts up to n in increasing order. Okay, what does that mean? We pick a number that we want to split up into partitions, such as 6, and a maximum size of each partition, 4. And then we come up with all the ways of summing up to 6 using pieces of that size. So we have 2 and 4 is 6, or we could have 1 and 1 and 4 is 6, but notice all these pieces are 4 or less. 3 and 3 is 6, 1, 2, 3 is 6, 1, 1, 1, 3 is 6, etc and we always list them from smallest to largest in order. And we can visualize all of these. So for instance, 2 plus 4, we could think of as six things in a two groups. We have a size 2 partition and a size 4 partition. Or 1 and 1 and 4, etc. So we can see all the different kinds. Okay. So, the question is, how are we going to compute the number of partitions of 6 up to size 4? Okay, so the question is, how are we going to compute this value, which is the number of different options, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 different ways of partitioning 6 using parts up to size 4. Well, we're going to look for a recursive decomposition. So we're going to find simpler instances of the same problem. So we want this partitioning problem to be solved using partitioning. And we're going to explore two different possibilities, creating a tree recursive process. One possibility is that we'll use at least one partition of size 4. And the other is, we won't use any 4s at all. So that divides up all of the different possibilities into two groups. We have the ones that include a partition of size 4 up here, and all the ones that don't down there. Okay, so when we recurse, we're going to make two recursive calls, one of which counts up however many partitions there are above the line, and the other however many there are below the line. And since all the ones at the top include a partition of size 4, we're really worried about how many different options there are when we've already used 4 and we only have 2 left over, which is just using 2 at once or using 1 and 1. Okay, so that's the structure of the problem. We're going to solve two simpler problems in order to actually make the computation. One is, we'll partition 2 using pieces up to size 4. Now, of course, you can't take 4 out of 2, but you can use either 2 alone or 1 plus 1. And then, below the line, those are all the ways of partitioning 6 using parts of size 3 or less. So that's partition 6, 3. So, Partition 2, 4 is counting up everything in that circle, and partition 6, 3 is counting everything below the line. And one way to think about this, and it's true of tree recursive processes in general, is that we're exploring different options with two different recursive calls. So by computing partition 2, 4, we consider the option of including 4 as one of our partitions, the other one doesn't include 4 as a partition, and by summing them up, we get all of the different possibilities, which are evenly divided into these two groups. Now, with the tree recursive process, we should be able to solve both of the subproblems through recursion as well. So if we look at partition 6, 3, that can be broken up into two different options. Either you use a 3 above that line, or you don't below that line. This can be broken up into whether you use 2 or not. 
And then some of these subproblems in here can also be broken up. So that's the tree recursive structure of the problem. Now, before I move on, think about what happens when you want to generalize this to not just 6 and 4, but n and m in general. So we want to define a function, count partitions, n, m, where n is the thing we're breaking up into pieces, and m is the maximum size of any piece. We started with partition 6, 4, and that broke up into this, these two options. So try to figure out what the recursive calls look like in order to compute count partitions. Pause if you want. I'm going to tell you the answer now. So the recursive call here is that we make a call to count partitions using a partition of size m. Now we might use more later, but we'll use at least one. So that means the number that's left to partition after that is n minus m, and we still have the same maximum size of a partition. Or we can declare that we'll never use another m. So we still have the same amount of partition n, but we've decreased m by 1 in the recursive call. So we compute this with m, we compute this without m, and then we return the sum, forming a tree recursive process by two recursive calls, and then using both of them to compute the return value. Cool! That's all there is to it, except for that we need to define base cases. And there are several with this recursive call. So, one thing that can happen is that we can perfectly use up n. So we take the last partition out, which is just the size of the number that we're trying to partition, and we end up with n equals 0. So n equals 0 means that's a correct way to partition n. Alternatively, we could accidentally have taken out a piece that's too big, an m that's 4 when there's only 2 left to partition. So if n is less than 0, that means we made a recursive call where we took out a chunk that was too big. That does not count as a partition, and we know we'll never be able to partition n, because it's negative. And then the last case that we can run into is what happens if m goes to 0? So if m goes to 0, that means we don't have parts left, because our maximum part size is 0, that means we can't partition anymore. Since we've looked through these base cases already, we know that n is still positive, so there's still some stuff left to partition, but we don't have any pieces to do it with. Which means we cannot continue, and we return 0 there as well. And that's a full definition of count partitions. Now, before we finish, let's just take a quick look at what happens in the environment diagram. So we define count partitions, and now we're going to count the partitions of 5 using pieces up to size 3. So count partitions is frame with n bound to 5, m bound to 3. This is not a base case, so we end up making a recursive call using a partition of size 3 which means n is down to 2. And after a little bit of work, we'll actually compute that return value. Right here. Okay, so partitioning 2 with m of up to 3 really only has two options. You either do 1 and 1, or you do 2. Those are the two return values. And when we return that, we bind that to with m in the original call. But we still have to compute the other half without m, which is an even longer process, which eventually winds up returning 3, bound to without m, and that's our return value of 5.